shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like the tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Injustice all around me, I shall not be moved. Injustice all around me, I shall not be moved just like that tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. We're standing for our future. Please do not be moved. We're standing for our freedom. Please do not be moved. Be like that tree that's planted by the waters. Please do not be moved. We're standing against racism. Please do not be moved. We're standing against racism. Please do not be moved. Be like that tree planted by the You know, music has always been a part of every justice movement. And this movement today, the, the movement for justice and humanity and dignity is no different. Music has always been the element that has galvanized, that has brought together, that has provided the collective drumbeat for our marching, for our collective move toward dignity. And so today, we offer a song to you for you to reflect for you to consider the power of one. Dignity still matters. Human justice still matters. And whether your fight for justice is medical justice, social justice, eco-justice, continue to stand against racism and continue to stand for what is right. joined today by 12-year-old Dimitri Johnson. And it was important for us to present together today to show the truth of generations, that we need generations to fight against racism. The old, the older, and the young. Gonna make a change. For once in my life Gonna feel real good Gonna make a difference Gonna make it right As I turn up the collar for my 
my favorite winter coat. This wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street without enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and one man's soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, cause they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know. Starting with the man in the mirror, and I'm asking him to change his way. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make the change. a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize that there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me pretending that they're not alone? A widow deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart. to change his way, and no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. I'm starting with the one in the mirror, mm, and I'm asking them to change their ways, and no To make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, put your hands together. We've all got to change. Hey, hey, hey.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome. I cannot tell you how meaningful it is to be with all of you here today in person and virtually in community to stand against racism. Racism is a cancer that has afflicted our country for centuries. Racism must be excised. Racism must be vanquished. All members of our community have the constitutional right to be safe at work, safe at home, and everywhere in between. There is much more we can and must do. This work is the responsibility of each and every one of us. We do the work as individuals, but more powerfully, we do so in collective and in community. I stand with you, and I know you all stand with me, and that gives us hope. Before I start, I want to just give another round of applause and thanks to Tony Johnson and his talented son, Dimitri, at age 12. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're cold on this April day, but you have warmed us. Tony is the Associate Dean for Student Social Justice and Inclusion at the Rhode Island School of Design. We are so glad, we are honored that you were with us here today. I want to share a little about the selections that Tony sang, because the selections are so meaningful. I shall, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. It's a traditional American song adopted by activists of the 1930s. It serves as an invocation and a call to gather. The second song, Man in the Mirror, known to all, is a call for personal reflection, introspection, and action. It calls for the deeper inner work that we must all do in order to realize lasting and external change. And that is where we are. It does feel like change is coming. Socrates said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And join with me, all of us, in this community. Let's continue to change and build the new. Two days ago, we heard the verdict from the Chauvin trial, guilty, guilty, guilty. Those words affirm for us that our judicial system can hold grave criminals accountable. It provided small relief for a nation in distress. This verdict did not restore breath to George Floyd. It did not return this man to his loving family. It did not serve justice to the far too numerous others whose injustice was never prosecuted because their death wasn't witnessed by the courageous and steady hand of Darnella Frazier, who recorded the nine long minutes and 29 agonizing seconds that robbed this man of his dignity and his life. We can never stop seeking justice, and we must always stand with those who are fighting for change. Now, I know that for too many of you, the trial reopened a wound, a wound that has been weeping and may never heal. The wound is the result of racism, inequality, discrimination. Members of our black and brown communities and those on the margins who often are without voice are disproportionately suffering and dying from two current crises of public health. Racism is a public health crisis, 
a crisis that is far more destructive than the second COVID-19. But the virus has revealed the hard lesson that social and economic inequalities cause pain. The lesson that we are learning that these inequalities cause pain, they cause suffering, they cause death. We must go beyond recognizing the impact of these economic and social conditions. And we, as a community of healers at HMS, must commit to social change. The wound of the trial has reopened still other wounds of many members of our community and served as a reminder for others of the discrimination and injustices faced by so many in our society. Please know that my heart goes out to all of you who are feeling that pain. You are part of us. And please know that we are committed at HMS to make this a safe haven for all of you. HMS is a community of healers and leaders. Our mission and values, our diversity statements signify our, our deep commitment to respect, integrity, and accountability. Among these core principles is that we acknowledge the strengths and the weaknesses of our history, and that we commit ourselves to actively promote social justice, to challenge discrimination, and to address the disparities and inequalities. Each of us here, as a defender of higher ideals, as an advocate for a more just and inclusive society, will redouble our efforts. I ask each of you now to take a few moments to reflect, as the song said, on our individual roles and responsibilities, to look at the man in the mirror as HMS continues the work of our aspirations as a community. Through both individual and collective action, HMS can be a force for good and an agent of change during these challenging times. Join us and be an agent for racial justice and social change. I would now like to introduce my colleague, who we are so privileged to have as a leader in this community, our Dean for Diversity and Community Partnership, Dr. Professor Joan Reed. I want to join Dean Daly in welcoming you today, a day when Harvard Medical School comes together to stand against racism, a day when we acknowledge a step forward toward justice that was witnessed this week with the verdict affirming the life, the value, and the humanity of George Floyd. But there is much more to be done and many more to remember. I want to share with you words that appeared on Twitter within the past few weeks. I'm not sure who the original author is. I've seen unknown and I've seen names. These are words that remind me of the racism and discrimination that has left so many with fear, anger, distrust, pain, and left on the margins. They are words that also show that change, significant change, must come. So I quote, I need to drive my two-year-old to daycare tomorrow. To ensure we arrive alive, we won't take public transit. Oscar Grant. I removed all air fresheners from the car and double checked my registration. Duante Wright. And ensured my plates were visible. Lieutenant Karan Nazario. I'll be careful to follow all traffic rules. Valendo Castile. Signal every turn 
Sandra Bland, Keep the Radio Low, Jordan Davis, and Won't Stop at a Fast Food Change for a Meal, Rayshard Brooks. I'm too afraid to pray, Reverend Clementa C. Pickney. So I just hope the car won't break down. Corey Jones. When my partner picks him up at the end of the day, they won't dance. Elijah McLean. Stop to play in a park. Tamir Rice. Patronize the local store for snacks. Trayvon Martin. Or walk around the block. Mike Brown. Once they're home, we won't stand in our backyard. Stephen Clark. Eat ice cream on the couch. Botham Jean. Or play any video games. Atatania Jefferson. After we tuck him into bed at 7.30, we won't leave the house to go to Walmart. John Crawford. Or to the gym. Tyshrant Oates. Or on a jog. Ahmed Aubrey. We won't even walk to see the birds. Christian Cooper. We'll just sit and try not to breathe. George Floyd. And not to sleep. Breonna Taylor. I'm now going to ask that we have about 90 seconds of silence. Time for us to reflect on those that have been killed and hurt for the families, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the parents, the children who have been left to remember, and for our community, for who we are and who we can be, as well as for our nation, for what and where we have been, what and where we are today, and what and where we can and should be moving forward. It's now my pleasure to welcome Joanne Suarez, a native of East Boston, a graduate of Boston Community Leadership Academy and the Donald McKay School, and an alum of Harvard with a master's in bioethics that she received here in May of 2020. Ms. Suarez is also founder of Latinx Bioethics and a member of the Family Van Team and is here today to share her poem, Open Your Eyes. Ms. Suarez.
Hello, everyone. It's a blessing to be here, and what a beautiful day the Lord has made for us today. Thank you for having me to hold space beside all of you today as we all open our eyes. When you look at me, you see violence. When I look at you, I see silence, both equally disruptive, equally chaotic, equally eruptive, of anger and the roots of mourning, both breeding limbs and visions distorted, both cultivators of fear, of comfort, and a pain we can't bear, pain that tugs at our hearts and destroys our minds, makes us kneel until we bleed, pain that forces us to see and hear our ancestors and children cry, pain that is distant but feels so near, that when we touch our wombs, it's like we're holding the many years of colonization, slavery, and justice. Lord, oh, why must violence and silence be so disruptive? We will never know. I remember like it was yesterday when I wrote this poem. I was sitting at the peak of the pandemic in a silent rage. I was traumatized by the deaths of my brothers and sisters, who we still say their names today. And day in and day out, I wept. And I thought to myself, as a black Latina, will my Harvard privilege shield me of being the next Breonna Taylor? Will it shield me from being the next Sandra Bland or even the next Don Wooten? Will it protect my future children if sons from being the next Trayvon Martin, Ahmaud Aubrey, or George Floyd? Conversely, here in Boston, my own backyard, where the world was in shamble for many of us. My beloved community was also being afflicted by gun violence and police brutality. I know this to be true because I myself have also intervened. Words cannot describe the injustice that we have witnessed, and it cannot describe or do justice to how physically and spiritually debilitating it has been to witness black and brown mothers from my community lose their babies. Babies who have now added to the disproportionate health disparities that scissor through the quality of life and life expectancy in our communities. To liberate myself and to liberate my neighbors from the societal chains that still enslave my peoples, I put that rage and silence on paper and into a message for all the black and brown mothers whose children still can call their names a message for our ancestors who live and know our pains. And I put it down for my community, for my loved ones, especially the young ones like Demetrius, who are watching closely. This poem was for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Suarez. It's now my honor to introduce Amari Paris Jeffries, Executive Director of King Boston, an organization committed to racial justice and equity. Mr. Jeffries is a member of the Board of Trustees of the University of Massachusetts and the Board of Directors of the Massachusetts Council of Human Service Providers. I'm pleased to say that Harvard Medical School is supporting King Boston's commitment to support deep, sustainable change led by those most affected by the economic injustice experienced in today's Boston. An example is the Forward Fund, which seeks to support black, indigenous, and people of color led grassroots organizations that provide direct service, work in base building efforts, provide mutual aid, and focus on historically marginalized communities. For those of you who wish to know more about the fund, the Forward Fund, please go to the King Boston website. And with that, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today, and thank you for the Johnson family for kicking us off with the music selection. Uh, music has always been a part of movements, and so it was fantastic for us to start uh, with some music. Uh, both because we're in the moment of racial reckoning in our country, I, I wanted to start off by reading a quick acknowledgement, land acknowledgement, 
acknowledgement for black lives and, and acknowledgement for BIPOC communities. As we cannot gather all here today in person, I'd like you to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technologies, structures, and ways of thinking we use every day. We are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous and black communities. So I invite you to join me in acknowledging this as well as our shared responsibility to make good of this time and for us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship. While we reflect on the verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial, let us not remember that what we have is accountability and not justice. This verdict sits in the backdrop of events and police killings. Remember Karan Nazario, Dante Wright, and Adam Toledo, names we have learned in the past few weeks. And now on the same day as the verdict, Makia Bryant. We often react to seminal moments such as the Chauvin verdict, using them to prompt to using them as a prompt to raise our voice, speak our values, and compel us to action. And yet, and yet, and yet, the post-pandemic new world demands that we act and not just react. We already know the killings of black and brown folks at the hands of law enforcement remains appallingly high. We also know that systemic racism is inherent in our systems, including public safety, education, higher education, and yes, healthcare. With the alarming rise in, in anti-Asian hate, the blatant transphobia playing itself in state houses across the country, and voter suppression emerging everywhere, these are the side effects of the anti-vaccine that some of us have voluntarily taken. But that was only the first dose. The verdict did not change these facts, nor the underlying realities that created them. Our work to combat anti-blackness, address structural racism, and to strive for equity must persist. We must provide space for people to voice their emotions and feelings by allowing that expression to occur without judgment or counter argument. We do not need a verdict to grant us permission to speak a few truths that persist regardless of any outcome. Those truths are that black lives matter, systemic racism must be combated every day, and that all of our lives are enhanced when we are closer together. We are on the eve of the 56th anniversary of Dr. and Mrs. King's return to Boston for the 1965 Freedom Rally. And so with the hopeful voice, I want to read a few lines uh, from Dr. King's speech at the Parkman Bandstand. And so many of you know that Dr. and Mrs. King were college students and met here uh, while they were students. And, and the civil rights movement, as we know it, was born here in Boston. So Boston has a significance uh, to the civil rights movement that we know and care about and continue to this day. And this is, these are Dr. King's words. I was educated here, and it is one of the cities which I call home. I come here not to condemn, but to encourage. It would be dishonest to say that Boston is Birmingham or that Massachusetts is Mississippi. It would be irresponsible of me to deny, however, the crippling poverty and injustice that exists in some sections of this community. The vision of the new Boston must extend a few miles that way into the heart of Roxbury. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. I'm reminded of Darnella Frazier and the importance of turning our cameras on, of opening our eyes, our ears, our minds, of documenting 
of holding ourselves and Harvard Medical School accountable, of not only remembering, but of acting. Our knowledge, our skills, opportunities, and privilege to address disparities and the broad challenges before our nation. This is a time for us to hold true to our values, to be vigilant, for our voices to be heard, and for, for us to also celebrate victories, all victories that move the needle. Understanding that there is more to be done, but in coming together, we are stronger. We can hold one another up and we together are better able to continue the push toward justice, toward equity, and toward inclusion for all. As we move toward the close of today's program, for those who, who are joining us here on the quad, you'll notice that there are Stand Against Racism pledge boards all around you. Please take a moment before you leave today to sign these boards, some are in the buildings, with an action about what you are personally willing to do to move towards racial equity. And for those of us joining on live stream, please consider sharing your pledge on your social media accounts using the hashtag HMS stands against racism or the tag at Harvard Med. The pledge boards that you see today and the campus are also in Vanderbilt Hall, NRB, TMAC, Arminisi. They will be up through the end of the month. So please, for the rest of this month, add your pledges to, the, to those and online. Um, now I'm going to ask Mr. Johnson to close our program with Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, a song adopted by the civil rights movement and served as a call to action for individuals, the broader community of activists, and justice-minded citizens. May it do the same for all of us. Mr. Johnson. I want to thank you all for allowing me and my family to be here. We are delighted to be a part of a Rhode Island delegation standing with Massachusetts, standing with Harvard Medical, and standing with you against racism. This last song, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, we know is not grammatically correct, but there are times when grammar is not the most important thing. It is important to stand, and so we ask that you would I get this song down in your heart and in your soul and in your spirit that when you leave this place or when you log off of your computer, the next time that you see acts of hatred on television or in your community, it will give you the resolve, it will give you that internal drumbeat to let nobody turn you around. Now we'll do this song together, so for those who don't know the words, I'd like to give them to you. So, in the African-American tradition of call and response, I'll give you the words, and if you can repeat them after me. So here we go. Ain't gonna let nobody. Oh, you could do better than that. Let's try it again. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody Turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking. Keep on talking. Marching on to freedom land. All right, so you got it. So let's do it together, all right? I'll sing it. We'll sing it together, all right? Get it down inside you and find that joy for the movement because you have to tap into the joy for sustainability. Here we go. You ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. 
and keep on talking, marching on to freedom land. Ain't gonna let no verdict turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let no verdict turn me round. I'm gonna keep on walking and keep on talking, marching on. Mom!